Four for Briggs hands Bears early momentum. While Warwickshire had a week with their feet up, Essex played their part in quite a remarkable game in Taunton, dominant for large swathes, apart from when facing up to Craig Overton, who made what looked a stroll in the park much more of a perilous excursion. The champions at Edgebaston were next, the tests keep coming in Division 1. For the second consecutive innings though, Brown was out cheaply, Hannon Dolby had his number, the opener out caught behind for two. They were still shy of 50 runs when Warwickshire had another big scalp, so Alistair Cook trapped in front by Rhodes for 23. Dan Lawrence joined Wesley and wasted little time getting his side to 50 with a boundary stroked through the offside off Rhodes. There'd be no more breakthroughs for the Bears in the opening session. Essex made their way through to lunch without further damage. The partnership up to 50 in the last over of the morning. The score now 88 for 2. The Bears rediscovered their touch at the resumption. Lawrence out for 30, bowled by a Hannon Dolby beauty. Critchley joined Wesley at the crease and promptly took his side through to three figures. But that's about it, and he too fell to Hannon Dolby, caught behind for two. Before long, Essex were five down. Norwell removed Rossington for four. A catch slapped to Lamb in the offside. Warwickshire were on the charge. Wheater, the next to go, to leave Essex six down. Gone without scoring, another for Norwell. Harmer offered little resistance. His innings lasted six balls before he was bowled for naught by fellow spinner Danny Briggs. Wickets had tumbled around him, but Wesley had resisted, and with a single off Briggs, reached a hard fought 50, scored of 140 balls. Slater announced his arrival. Briggs launched over the leg side for six, but the Warwickshire spinner got his own back. Slater tried to do it again, but only found Yates, the bowler, out for 11. Wesley needed someone to stay with him, into the 70s now. 150 on the board for his side, but they were up against it. Stachetti did what he could, but would eventually succumb, bowled by Briggs for 10, the innings heading towards its end before the break. Briggs sealed it, the captain was the last wicket to fall, caught by Lamb for 80, the visitors all out for just 168, and the Bears headed into tea in charge of this match. Wesley's knock was by far and away the highest of the innings. 50 runs clear of second top scorer Dan Lawrence's 30. Briggs, though, finished with 4 for 31, a fine showing of spin in a first innings effort, while Haddon Dolby had sparked the collapse with his 3 for 43. Warwickshire 2 lost an early wicket. Alex Davis gone for a quick quiet 22 off 21, caught by Harmer off the bowling of Sam Cook. Sibley and Yates targeted 50 team runs, but they'd be stopped in their tracks, 4 shy. Yates out LBW for 10 to Stachetti. Payne joined Sibley at the crease, and they navigated the rest of the session well. The pair took the score past 50 runs with a single from the Bears' opener. They were in sight of three figures when time was called on the first day at Edgebaston. The score 76 for two. On the home side, the happier of the two wandering off the field of play. Excellent bowling had given the Bears a solid start against Essex, who, for the second time in a row, had fallen to a score below 200 runs. But the visitors won't be put off. They've seen enough in the wicket to know that they could easily claw back that lost ground with some good bowling on day two.